everybody. Since this is such a long video, in fact, one of the longest videos I've ever produced, I'm including a video time guide for your convenience so that you can fast forward to certain parts of the video for future reference. I hope you enjoy. Hi everybody, it's Angelo with Angelo's Workbench. Welcome back to the channel. For my first tutorial in a while, I have decided to do how to paint a model car without stinking up the house. Now, there's a couple of caveats that go along with this. Uh, before I get into that, I want to discuss the model kit that you see in front of you. This is the model that I will be using for this tutorial. This model was provided to me by the folks at Atlantis so that I could share it with you. Um, it is the 71 Pontiac, Fire, Pontiac Firebird that they have released this year. It is in 32nd scale, which means it's just a little bit smaller than what you would uh, typically see in a quarter scale. Um, I would say that it's about three-quarter size, if I had to guess. Um, we'll get into a more detailed look at this kit as we go. Um, the, the kit is fully detailed. It has a motor. It has uh, um, detailed interior. It looks like a lot of fun. I'm, I'm really excited about the 30-second scale because uh, as far as taking up space on a display shelf, it'll be a little bit smaller. And, uh, and the subject is excellent. I am a, a big fan of the, of the 71 Pontiac Firebird. I think it's a beautiful car, and I'm really looking forward to building it with all water-based paints. And we'll get into that. Atlantis also sent me along with the kit their latest uh, catalog. This is their 2021 catalog. And um, I'm not going to go through everything in here, but if you're into uh, aircraft, ships, um, armor, airplane engines, they have uh, they have a tremendous amount of things um, for interest. And then they've recently acquired the rights to all of the to to a bunch of old uh, monogram kits from Ravel USA before they got bought out by Ravel Germany. That's based on what I've read online. This is all based on what I've read online. Um, and they, they have, they're bringing out some excellent stuff. Um, and there's the, the Pontiac right there. And they've got tons of, uh, tons of cool stuff coming out. And they even have like sci-fi, some kits that probably haven't seen the light of day in a really long time. Um, the Unreal Roller. I mean, when's the last time you saw one of those? Mr. Gasser. And then they have some, uh, some figures, you know, King Kong, Godzilla. Um, some Navy ships and Snoopy. Who doesn't like Snoopy? But, uh, but they have a, they have a tremendous amount of stuff. Um, check out their website, atlantis-models.com for more. So let's talk about what this tutorial is going to be about. And we are going to have a very close look at this kit as we go through it. So this is how to paint a model car without stinking up the house. So these are all water-based paints. I've got everything from Tamaya, which is acrylic, to the Ravel Aqua Color, to the Vallejo Model Color. For primer, I like Steinol Res, which is made by Badger Airbrush, and I buy it in bulk, <laughs> gray and white. Um, I do have a small bottle of the black. Um, and then here is some more Vallejo, the metal color set that's pre-thinned for airbrushes. And then I have a ton of Createx airbrush colors. They have a ton of color options. And But if you're going to airbrush Createx on plastic, you need some things to go with it, like balancing clear or UVLS clear. And then the, um, the 4011 uh, thinner. So not all of these are able to be done with distilled water as the Ravel Aquacolor is. And what I would suggest to you is when you get an acrylic paint, whatever acrylic paint it is, read online. For example, Createx on their website for every single one of these paints, they have um, information out there on exactly what to do. It says, visit createx.com for more product and tech info. They have sheets that tell you exactly how to mix it, what ratio to mix it with the balancing clear, what ratio to mix it with the UVLS, UVLS clear, what ratio to mix it with the thinner. 
how long to let it set. For example, when you stick balancing clear in or UVLS clear in with this paint, you are converting it from an acrylic to an acrylic polyurethane and it needs to set. It needs to set for about 10 minutes before you try and spray it. If you try and spray it before you wait, it hasn't completely, I don't know, mixed or become what it needs to become. Um, I am not a science expert. I just read the instructions online. And that's what I'm telling you guys. In order to increase the sprayability and the durability of these acrylic paints, just read the instructions. So, and even though these are all water-based paints and there isn't a substantial stink. Now, I'm going to say how to paint, how to airbrush or how to paint a model car without stinking up the house. Yes, it will not stink up the house. Is there still an odor? Yes, there is still an odor. It, more often than not, it's going to smell like um, glass cleaner or maybe like a cleaning solvent. It does not smell stinky. Because trust me, I have a spray booth over there and I'll be using the spray booth uh, simply to control the particulates and the vapors. And, and that to be said, I want to add, even though these are water-based paints and even though we won't be stinking up the house, um, I will still wear gloves because some of these will still irritate your skin and I will still be wearing a spray mask. Even though you don't need to worry about vapors per se, what you need to worry about is fine particulates you do not want fine paint particulates getting into your lungs. So still wear a mask. Still wear gloves, right? You still want to protect yourself. Just because you won't be sticking up the house, and, and stinking up the house is a relative thing, okay? And I hope everybody is still with me and listening to all of these disclaimers. Yes, we won't be stinking up the house, but there will still be some slight odor. Now, if you were to spray a 2K clear, I've sprayed 2K clear in the house. I've sprayed lacquers in the house. This stuff makes an odor that is 5% of that, okay? You spray 2K clear, it's like somebody set off a, a, a vapor bomb in the room, okay? And it stinks up the whole second floor of my house, and nobody, nobody appreciates that, right? So, so using these paints, and I've been using these paints for a while now. I've, I've gone all acrylic. If you watch my original How to Paint a Model Car tutorial where I use the 2K Clear, I've been using all acrylics for a while now simply to eliminate the odor and, or minimize the odor. There will be some odor. Anytime you're spraying anything, you will smell this stuff, okay? But this stuff smells like a fresh sunny day compared to 2K Clear, okay? So that's my... That's my, uh, that's my spiel. And also I want to add for each of these model paints, they have their own thinner. Now you can experiment and I've been doing plenty of experimenting. These are acrylic paints. If you want to try to uh, save money on thinners, try distilled water first. If distilled water doesn't work, you can try something like glass cleaner. Um, keeping in mind that the glass cleaner has ammonia in it. Or you can buy, like I have done, you can buy ammonia-free glass cleaner. Um, try the ammonia-free glass cleaner. See if that works. A bottle of ammonia-free glass cleaner is less expensive than model thinners. For the Createx stuff, all of my experiments using alternative thinning methods have not gone well. So for the Createx colors, and they have so many, they have so many beautiful colors. Um, for anything that you're trying to duplicate, they have a nice pearlized white here, which is probably what's going to find its way onto this Firebird because I want to use the original blue decals that come with it. Uh, with the blue bird that goes on it, um, so I so I definitely need a uh, a white car. I think um, so. I'll mix a little opaque white for everybody who doesn't know what opaque is. Opaque just means you can't see through it. Okay, pearlized paints. You can see through these, so don't think that you're gonna take a car that's primered in gray, spray this pearl green on it, and get a pearl green car. You will be disappointed. The pearlized paints are transparent. 
So they need to be over a silver or a white or a gray, but they need to be over it. And whatever you put it over, that's going to kind of give you the color. So break out the plastic spoons, which is what I use. I keep a, I keep a, uh, a plastic bin full of plastic spoons handy. And I wash the plastic spoon with glass, with uh, with uh, dish soap. And I primer it with the same primer and I apply the same paint, just as if it's a model body. And I do that for every car I build, I do a test spoon, just to make sure that I don't end up with problems on the model body and then into the paint stripper it has to go, the purple pond, and then I have to start all over again. So if I'm experimenting with colors, which I'm most of the time I am, I use a spoon as a test. I completely paint the spoon, I test it, and it gives you very good information. How many coats do you need of these pearlized colors? Or if you're using a candy, even more so. This stuff is great, by the way. This Candy 2 l Oh, some beautiful colors are possible with a, a pearl candy finish. Amazing, amazing. Um, but you start with an opaque. So when I was doing my pearlized yellow uh, wrecker that uh, has Angelo's uh, workbench on the side of it. Uh, I don't know if you've seen that. I think I threw some pictures of that up in one of my videos. Um, there's an opaque yellow underneath and then a pearl yellow over the top. And that's where you get the flake from. Or you can add in... Uh, you can add in a pearl into your clear coat. In fact, the UVLS clear is the medium that you use to spray the candy onto uh, a car. But then depending on how many coats of candy you use, it gets darker. You see, so that's another thing for the test spoons. You're testing to make sure that you're mixing it correctly. You're testing to make sure that it's going to look good on the model car. But then you're also checking your shade. How dark do you want it? And you make notes. I usually write right on the handle of the spoon, you know, two coats of gray primer, three coats of opaque yellow, um, and then, you know, somewhere between three and four coats of the pearlized paint. The other nice thing about the water-based paint is most of this stuff cures fairly quickly. Ten minutes, 15 minutes, it's done. It's done. Um, they're, they're not like uh, lacquers where you got to let it gas out. Um, these things are ready to be clear coated, usually fairly quickly. Follow the instructions. Again, you must follow the instructions. Um, and it tells you what to mix with, how to lower the viscosity, how to, what to mix it with. Apply four to six semi-wet coats, flash time, 10 minutes between coats, 60 minutes before clear in ideal conditions. So ideal conditions, you know, it's not humid. It's not a, you know, 90% humidity and it's not, uh, you know, 100 degrees or it's not 40 degrees, you know, in ideal conditions. And they lay out what those ideal conditions are online. So that's the intro. This is what's coming. How to paint a model car without stinking up the house using these water-based paints. We are going to be on camera mixing, spraying, and assembling that model kit. Let's talk briefly about spraying. I will be using one of three airbrushes. I have this little airbrush. It's called the Master. It's a little gravity-fed single action, right? You push this, paint comes out. Nothing, you can't slide it. You adjust the flow by unscrewing this, and that's it. Single action. Uh, I like this sometimes for certain paint colors. Um, I don't use this that often. Uh, my go-to that I use for everything, my Awada Eclipse HPCS. Here it is. Uh, gravity fed double action. I use this thing for everything. Um, engines, chassis, wheels, any kind of detail painting that I'm doing, this is the one. I use a 0.5 millimeter tip and that's it. Clear coating, when I nearly need to wet something out, I use this. The name of this airbrush is Airbrush. It's a no-name Chinese knockoff of an airbrush. I bought it on uh, Amazon or eBay. I'm not sure where. I like it because it has a trigger mechanism. It has a very large paint cup and it has a 0.8 millimeter tip. It's the largest tip I've ever seen in an airbrush. Um, it cleans up easy. Again, I, I, can have, I have the ability to set trigger motion based on where this screw is. That's how far back the trigger goes. 
gives me a little bit of control. Um, there are definitely some caveats with using this airbrush. Uh, and any inexpensive airbrush that you buy online is probably going to be the same way. I noticed that it will allow clear coat to run into the tip. So I always have to spray out away from the car and then spray the car. And then when I'm done spraying the car, I have to set this somewhere so that as it continuously drips out. Um, and again, it's just because I, I may not have the needle set perfectly. Um, I don't think there's a very good seal in here. Again, it's an inexpensive airbrush, but it does the purpose for me. And I have learned how to work around any shortcomings that this airbrush has. But it has exchangeable, interchangeable cups. You can take this cup off and put on a different size one. I have the biggest one on because I'm using the biggest tip, the 0.8 millimeter tip, because when I'm clear coating, um, I want to wet it out, right? And this does a great job of wetting it out with still with a pretty fast motion, so I can minimize any runs or sags. So those are the airbrushes. So stay tuned. There's going to be plenty more in this video and, uh, and other videos on how to paint a model car without stinking up the house using the plethora of water-based paints and the beautiful 71 Pontiac Firebird provided from Atlantis Models. Stay tuned for more. Okay, so now that I've got all the paints out of here, let's have a closer look at this kit. Um, right off the bat, beautiful picture of a car right on the front cover. And this is their Route 32 series, cleverly named for the fact that they're all 30-second scale does include a set of decals and this is why I'm going with white because I really want to use the white blue color scheme um the only challenge I'll have is matching that blue as close as I can to paint that shaker blue um and then what else have we got here just more pictures of the car We've got 46 parts molded in color water slide decals here's the colors that they recommend you have uh, then we get into the kit itself. So here we go. I've already been in here and opened the plastic bag, so you don't have to witness that. And uh, so here is the body. We have uh, just a little bit of flash. That'll come right off with a razor blade knife. Underhood detail. Look, there's even a little battery. Uh, windshield washer jug or a coolant overflow jug. The master cylinder is in here. You can get tricky with the detail painting and make this look very nice, which I, which I full well plan on doing. Um, the little Pontiac letters, even though this is 30 second scale, the little Pontiac letters look nice and crisp. I don't know if that's coming in okay for you there or if it's a little blurry. But uh, it looks good. And even the little grill and the little fender in the grills, you can see the mesh. It's pretty good for 30 second scale. Um, we got a chrome sprue. We got a, a beautiful set of wheels here. We got the taillights, bumper. Um, the way the front is, is the grill and the headlights push in from the back. Um, and there's even a uh, little shifter right there. And uh, we got the glass, one piece, windshield and uh, back windshield. And uh, a couple of headlights. Not very many sprues. There's only two or three of them. So here we have the, uh, the top of the engine, the shaker, the front end. Uh, the bottom of the uh, shaker, and a pair of bucket seats. And then going here, we have the undercarriage, some engine parts, side view mirrors, the hood, the dashboard. And again, 30 second scale. Look at the detail on the dash. You can see, remember they had that, um, that metallic, uh, like reflective decal? Like you can see the texture of that. Look at the little radio. It's totally cool. Really cool. And then the engine is kind of interesting. So you have the bottom of the engine as part of the chassis. So we'll have to either brush paint that or mask and spray that. But then we have two sides of the engine here and transmission, as you can see. And then the other sprue that we just looked at had the top. So as far as I can tell, that's a four-piece a four-piece engine, which will be interesting. So... Uh, not any different than what you would normally see in a kit as far as the number of pieces for the engine because the heads are usually separate. This one has the heads, the valve covers, and the intake manifold all together. 
So there'll be some masking and some painting there. But uh, but that's that. And you can even see if you look really closely on the frame here, you can see the brake lines, fuel lines. Like they're 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 on here. That is totally cool. I'm gonna be using my magnifier for sure to get the details on the 30 second scale. Uh, we got the, uh, the fantastic steering wheel. Like that was an awesome steering wheel. I was a big Firebird Trans Am fan uh, back in the day. The Bandit cars and going backward. Um, just fantastic. And even the 80s ones too, like Knight Rider. Like I've always been a Firebird Trans Am fan. Um, the rear end and then the interior tub looks really nice. Good texture on there for carpet. Looks good. It's going to be a great kit to build. I'm, I'm really looking forward to this. And then we have tires. So the tires are kind of interesting. They they have a... First of all, they have letters. It is Goodyear Eagle GTs. Um, and I really want to white letter these. We'll see if I'm up to it. Um, the the marks on the side are very crisp. And, um, and I'm going to give it a shot. I'm going to try and white letter those. So there's a hole in the back. And the way it works is there is a, a mounting, um, I don't know what you would call it, this thing. And that goes in the hole, well, the other way, and then it goes on the axle. So it's almost like you don't have any wheel backs because you don't need them. The tire is the wheel back. I think that's kind of cool. We'll see how it works. Uh, and then we have the instructions, which are fairly straightforward. You're going to get one page here. Page and a half, actually. Um, she starts out with the motor, build up the chassis, take care of uh, the interior, and then you're on to uh, final assembly. Put the glass in, the interior in, with mounting pins in the body. That's kind of cool. I like when they do that. Um, I'll be doing some test fitting, make sure everything is, is good. Um, I haven't done a lot of 30-second scale, so this should be very interesting. You do the rear bumper, taillights, put the hood on the side view mirrors, and you're done. I think I will pin those side view mirrors if I can. We'll see. I like to pin side view mirrors so they hold on nice and steady. And then the decals. They look really cool. So you have uh, what I believe would be... Let me get the picture out here. So you have a hood stripe. You have a bird... Now, this car has a roof stripe. So there's the roof stripe, and then this must be the trunk stripe. So you have hood, roof, trunk. There's a little bird for the front right there. Um, some Several Trans Am logos, which I believe go on the side, and there's one that goes on the back. I'm going to have to do some um, photo research to get this straight. And then, uh, you know, the 455 high output... Right there, right on the license plate. And I will use that plate. That plate's kind of cool. And it'll go with the color scheme of the car. And uh, and they include an Atlantis decal. Hey, why not? Um, so that's it. Okay. The Steinel Res, which is made by Badger Airbrush, is my go-to primer. I've got two colors here, gray and white. This car is going to be white. Um... Depending on how the body is, I might use a gray primer as a glide coat over the white plastic so I can see what I'm doing. And then use a white primer over the gray primer so that I have a contrast underneath so I can tell when I sand through. But this body looks really nice and is in good shape. So I'm going to just go with a white primer right off the bat so that I can roll right into my white color that I plan on using. So just got to shake it up good. This is pre-mixed, self-leveling, ready to go.
it's time to mix this up. I want a little bit of pearl in my paint, so I'm going to shake this pearl a lot. And I'm going to shake this opaque too. So like I said before, with Createx, the pearl eyes, they're transparent. So you need something with a little bit of bite. Now I'm going on white primer, so I probably don't need this, but I'm gonna put it in anyway. This is a little car, so we're not gonna need a lot of paint. And we're gonna put our pearl in. That's going to be beautiful. Let's mix it up. We need a little bit more than this. Now comes the balancing clear. Balancing clear. Automotive and plastic applications, right? Add 10 to 25% per volume. So I'm going for more like the 25% per volume right there. It's an estimate. You can use the measuring on the side if you're not comfortable with your estimate. I use an estimate. I've been working with this material for a while. Now we need to thin it. Because this stuff is way too thick. There we go. Again, I'm estimating just based on my experience with the material tells you 5 to 10 percent per volume 10 to 25 percent per volume it says it right there i've used this stuff a lot and i'm shooting through an airbrush so i like it to be a little bit thinner just about like that Now this material, if you go online and read Createx's website, they will tell you once you mix this in, you get to wait 10 minutes. So five o'clock, we're spraying. And we'll come back. It's been 10 minutes. A nice metal flake in that white, I like it. up our clear coat now 40 50 gloss uvls clear with 40 11 high temperature there 
There we go. Perfecto. I know how to do it. Mixing stir stick. Now we're going to do some silver parts. I'm using Vallejo acrylic metal color aluminio or aluminum or aluminium as some people say. So I'm giving this a good shake and um, going to basically I'm just looking to paint the leaf springs here. I want to paint them silver and I'm going to paint the exhaust silver and then after I paint the leaf spring silver I'll mask them off and paint the rest black after and then uh, on this front end i just want to do the tie rod here and these broad the uh, steering linkages up here silver and then i'll mask them and i'll airbrush the rest black after it's just what i want to do um the wheels sometimes i strip the chrome sometimes i don't this time i'm not stripping the chrome because i want to be able to take a cotton bud with a little bit of water and buff off the center because i i notice on the on the wheels that the center looks chrome and I kind of like that look with the aluminum out here and the uh, center chrome so so I'm going to airbrush these guys and then this is the uh, alternator that's going to be aluminum and um, and that's the extent of what I'm going to paint aluminum I'm going to do it right now with the Vallejo acrylic metal color this is good stuff it's pre-thinned there we go I'm going to go from all four directions. There we go. Yeah. Give it a shot from the top. There it is. So it's time for us to paint the interior and the scoop on the hood. So I want to match the scoop on the hood as close I can to this decal color so that it looks pretty good. So I've got some blue and some white because my blue is 
a little bit darker than that blue. So I figure if I just add a little bit of white to it, we should be good to go. So I'm going to start with some blue, maybe. There we go. That's plenty. And let's add a, just a little bit of white, mix it together. When mixing colors, it's best to do a little tiny bit at a time because you'd be shocked how fast it changes. Just one little tiny bit of white. Like, look at that, I put three drops in and we got substantially lighter. going to paint all the black parts so let's get started for this I'm going to use the Revell aqua color because it's not pre-thinned I want you to see me mix it you see what I mean about this stuff is super thick right Yeah, super duper thick. I'm going to use some Tamiya thinner, or you can use distilled water. Ready to shoot.
we get to paint the motor. So I've got the motor here ready to go. I'm going to do the transmission silver. And I have masked off the underside, just leaving the engine block, the oil pan, basically, uh, portion. And um, looking online, the engine is some kind of a light blue color. I have this from Wicked Colors. It's called Wicked Laguna Blue. I actually did a Ferrari this color um, not too long ago. Now we're going to get started on assembly. Um, I've gone through and painted everything, the primary colors. Then I've gone masked and detail painted or brush painted. For example, I, I sprayed the engine, but I brush painted the transmission and the oil filter. Um, and I sprayed the gas tank. Um, the steering wheel, I brush painted the little silver spokes, and I'm still going to put a little wash in those little tiny holes. I'll do that when I assemble. Look at how great the dashboard came out. Look at the detail on the dash. Fantastic. In 30 second scale, like I still have, I, I keep having to remind myself that um, that this is little, you know, 30 second scale. And, uh, and the way the engine comes out once you detail paint the headers and everything, like it looks great, and it's going to be... It's going to be fine when I get it in there and get it all assembled. The big 455 high output. I've got the details on the under, on the front end, um, and the rear springs. What else did I do detail? I did a little bit of detail work on the interior. Looking at reference photos online, the center console is blue except for around the shifter. I picked up the brake pedals, and that's looking good. I might do a little bit. I got to do some photo research again. I might do a little bit of silver work on the door, or I might just leave it be. We'll see. I got the seats ready to go. Um, I was able to with the uh, with the jelly roll pen. Um, this stuff is great. Uh, the um, pick out the white letters on the tires, so they look pretty good. Um, and they, these are small, like 30 second scale. These are small. It was, I was, I was concerned about if I was going to be able to do that. And then these are those wheel pins that I told you about. They just go in and then the tire is actually the wheel back. That's really cool. So we'll get into that when we get into, um, assembly, final assembly. Uh, I still have a couple more things to do. I've got the front grille detailed, the taillights detailed, the hood. I picked up the hood vents with a little Tamiya wash. Um, the bumper here is ready to go. Decals are ready to go. The body has been um, detailed. I picked up the, with a Sharpie, I picked up the, the marker lights on the front and the back and it masked off and airbrushed the trim around the front grille. Around the front headlights is done with a silver Sharpie. Uh, masked and picked up the trim, did the black under the hood. It's looking, it's looking really good. Picked up the lock cylinder. Um, the decals are going to be uh, great. There's there's even little uh, little white 455 HO decals for the side of the shaker. There's a Ram Air also for the side of the shaker. If you wanted to, I guess maybe that's like an option. The little Trans Ams go on the side. The big Trans Am goes on the back. And, uh, and I'll put the stripes on. So I still have to do the decals. So uh, I will come back after I finish up just a couple more things. Uh, off camera um, just uh, putting the uh, wash in here and uh, and I'll put the decals on off camera so come on back for more
Now, this is why I pin side view mirrors. You can see I've drilled a pin into that mirror and I've drilled a hole into the body where the mirror goes. Don't even need glue. I mean, I'm gonna put glue on it, but uh, it just makes it that much easier. You don't have to deal with the side view mirror falling off the side of the car, making a glue mark on the side of the car. That is what pinning side view mirrors is all about. And that's why Bingo. Voila. Done. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the folks at Atlantis Model for sending me over the 71 Pontiac Firebird so that I could share it with you. I hope that you enjoyed watching me build it. It was a great build. I had a lot of fun. The kit is excellent. It goes together very well. No fit issues, no problems. I had a, a lot of fun painting and detailing up a 30 second scale card. I a car. I like how the uh, how it has the detailed 455. I like the way it goes together, and I really like the interior. The interior has uh, all the all the details that you would expect in even a quarter scale car. The, the dashboard is well engraved. It really looks great. Um, I've included at the end of this slideshow a picture of a quarter scale Mustang, just for size comparison. Um, it really is almost as big as a quarter scale, about two thirds the size. Um, the front end of the car just looks amazing. I really like how they had the grill and the headlights come in from the back. I think that makes it a lot easier for detail painting. Thank you again for following along. Thanks for watching the How to Paint a Model Car Without Stinking Up the House video. I hope you had fun watching. I certainly had fun making the video. Go ahead and click that subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber. And don't forget to hit the bell so you get notified when I publish new content. Likes and comments are always welcome too. Lots of exciting things coming up. Stay tuned for more.